From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Ben Orloff, Mr. Dollar, at Continental Insurance Company in New York. Oh, yes, Mr. Orloff. What can I do for you? Did you ever hear of a place called Virtue? Are you kidding? I'm very serious. Oh, wait a minute. Virtue, South Carolina? That's right. You, uh, want me to go down there? Yes, if you will. <laughs> Do you have a bulletproof vest and a couple of extra handguns I can take along? Well, my one suggestion would be that you do not take along any firearms. After all, ex-gangsters... Yeah, I see what you mean. All right, what do you want me to do? Our representative has his office in Georgetown. He can give you the whole story. His name is Joseph Pigatello. Got it, Joseph Pig... Smokey Pigatello? The guy whose name was linked with Murder Incorporated a few years back? Yes, Dollar Joe Smokey Pigatello. You, uh... Sure you want this assignment? Well, I'll tell you this, Mr. Orloff. Yes? If you don't have to pay off on my insurance policy before I'm through, well, mister, this is going to cost you a whopping big expense account. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Continental Insurance Company, Georgetown, South Carolina office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Village of Virtue matter. Expense account item one, $47 even, transportation and all the incidentals I could think of, Hartford, Connecticut to Georgetown, South Carolina. Item two, a dollar for a cab to Continental's office on Screven Street. Hi, Dollar. I'm Joe Pigatello. Uh, glad to see you. Sit down. Thanks. Now, look, Joe, before we go into this matter, there's something I'd like to know. <laughs> sure, pal. Ask it. Just what are you doing in the insurance business? Look, you remember back in New York just before Tom Dewey took over as DA? The great holy racket buster? Yeah, and I'm sure you do. Okay. Well, I was just a young punk then, but I was a bright one. Ambitious, you know. Finished up my high school, started taking law. You studied law? Why not? I could have cleaned up. You know, mouthpiece for some of the mob, some of the boys I knocked around with. But then Dewey came along, broke up the racket, so I gave it up. To do what, Joe? Oh, you know, this and that. Chicago for a while with some of the boys Al Capone left behind. And down near the border at San Diego for a while. Smuggling then... narcotics across from Mexico? Then some of us tried Las Vegas, but we didn't get any... What was that crack? Well... Listen, I'm clean. You make a crack like that, you can prove it, okay. If you can't, don't say it. You were telling me how you got into the insurance business. All right. When I'm taking you on this case, don't talk like that. The gents I deal with don't like it. And don't forget, whatever you think about them, you could also be wrong. Okay, Joe. Two kinds of wrong, Dollar. Just plain wrong and dead wrong. You see what I mean? All right, as I was saying, uh, how I got in this insurance racket. As you were saying. Well, some of the boys from New York and Chicago and around did pretty good. Instead of blowing all that dough on booze and dames and big times, they were smart. They leased an old plantation up in the valley north of here on the P.D. River. The old Caraway Plantation. It's right next to the town of Virtue. Great name for a hideout, I'll say that. I didn't say hideout, Dollar. It was just a nice, quiet place where they could live it up in a nice, quiet way. And at the same time, they wouldn't have any cops around their neck. No police in Virtue? <laughs> Nobody but old Polly Caraway. Anyhow, after six, eight months of taking it easy, mint juleps and hunting and fishing instead of being on the lam all the time... Well, Johnny, you wouldn't believe it. What do you mean? Well, they all settled down there to spend the rest of their life. They all went respectable. Every last one of them. You sure of that? Well, it's been 20 years now. Can you be any more sure than that? I don't know. But uh, go on with what you were saying. All right. I, I got an idea. I signed up with this little insurance company. Then I went up to Virtue and made the pitch. They're all respectable now, and they got to make like respectable people and cover themselves with a lot of insurance. And it worked? <laughs> you remember Lefty Stemper? The old-time numbers king from Chicago? Right. Bookies, slot machines, everything. Oh, pal of mine. So when he told the rest he was buying insurance, well, Johnny, I got policies on every one of them. The rest of the town, too. On their life, their homes, everything. Okay, now let's get to the point. What's happened up there in virtue? Trouble, Johnny. Old man Carraway for me. What kind of trouble? Well, 20 years now, the boys and the people in virtue have been getting along fine. 
The boys have been behaving themselves, and the, the people in town are all nice people. Until a couple of weeks ago. What happened? Bully Magoon had himself a nice little fishing boat. Had it ever since he went straight and moved in up there. Twenty years ago. Now somebody stole it. Well, why don't you just pay off his claim and forget it? Listen, a couple of days after that, Mr. Avery, that runs the general store in Virtue, had his boat stolen. So you'll have to pay another claim. But small ones, Joe. Look, will you listen? Ever since then, not a day has gone by that somebody hasn't had something stolen from him. Mostly the people in Virtue. Boats, cars, money, furniture, anything you can think of. The people blame the boys, and the boys blame the people. And, Johnny, there's going to be a civil war in Virtue unless somebody finds out who's doing this. And if that happens, there's going to be a lot of killing. And, well, with all the insurance I've sold, me and the company are going to be in trouble. Well, can't you get the state police to come in? State police? Invite you? You said it's a real respectable community now. Yeah, sure it is. But, well, dragging them in might really start things off. That, well, that's why I had to send for you. <sighs> Look, why don't we go up there so I can see for myself? <laughs> sure, Johnny, sure. But, hey, uh, open your coat. What? I mean, if you're going to take along that lemon squeezer... Well, take my advice and don't. <laughs> You've a pretty sharp eye, Joe. Johnny, boy, I can spot a shoulder holster a mile away. But so can some of the boys up in the valley on the plantation. And I don't want you to end up with a slug between your eyes. Real respectable people. Well, uh, shall we go? Uh, my car's outside. Into the valley of death rode the 600. Huh? At least a couple of them. What are you talking about? Uh, nothing, Joe. Let's go. <laughs> Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Our flag now numbers 50 stars, and behind each star, there stands yet another flag representing one of the 50 states. Florida state flag bears the Red Cross of St. Andrew in sympathy with the flag of the Confederacy on a field of white. Centered over the cross is the state seal. Within a golden circle, the sun, an emblem of glory and splendor representing absolute authority, peers over a highland in the distance. Flowers, a symbol of hope and joy, are scattered by an Indian maiden, indicative of the Indian influence within the state. Centered is the cocoa or palm tree, an emblem of victory, justice, and royal honor. Florida state flag, the flag of the 27th state to enter the Union, was adopted in 1900. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Village of Virtue Matter. <laughs> Joe Pigatello, erstwhile gangster turned insurance agent, led me out to his car and we headed north out of Georgetown, South Carolina. After 20 miles or so, we swung onto a side road paralleling the P.D. River. Then finally, we came to the old Caraway Plantation. Acres and acres of huge old live oak trees festooned with Spanish moss. Flowers, millions of them. Azaleas, iris, roses, rhododendron bushes aflame with color in the afternoon sun. Then, at the end of a broad, tree-lined path, the fine old colonial mansion with its towering pillars. The property faced the curving, lazy yellow river. And lying across it was a broad expanse of marshy grass, crisscrossed here and there by canals, through which the slaves in olden times hauled the rice crop to the riverboats. Yeah, it was a beautiful spot. A calm, quiet, peaceful spot, apparently. Well, here we are, Johnny. Let's go in and see if anybody... What? Hey, hey, hold it, hold it, you punks! It's me, Smokey! Smokey! Who else? Put those guns away! You want to get in trouble? Don't you guys know no better to come barging in this way without letting us know you're coming? Come on, Johnny. Sure. <sighs> nice, peaceful spot, huh? Who's that you got with you, Smokey? Boys, this is Johnny Dollar. He's from the insurance company. Uh, Johnny, uh, this is Bo Magoon. Yeah, hi. And uh, this is Lefty Stemper. Hiya. Johnny Dollar, huh? And the shrimp there is Flippy Lakovich. Hiya, J Johnny. I'm pleased to meet you. What? That's the... away, Flippy. Hey, what did uh... you bring here? Smokey a dick or something? Yeah, Dollar. What's the idea of packing a rod? All right, all right. Let him go, you guy. Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah. Look, he's on our side. He's up here to find the stuff that's been stolen. Yeah. We don't need no outside help. Oh, you've uh, found who's behind the thefts, huh, Lefty? No. If it's any of your business, it is I don't my business. You're interrupting me. Yeah, Dollar, shut up. I say we'll find out who's coming over here from Virtue and taking our stuff ourselves. And when we do, we'll eliminate them. Right back to the old days, huh? If we got to, to protect our rights. How about letting me have my gun? Well? Here, yeah, Flippy, he wants his gun. Huh? <laughs> 
You make a move the dollar and I'll flip you so fast that Oh, you'll... you mean like this? <laughs> hey, 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 it's Flippy got flipped. <laughs> boy, Johnny. Yeah, the shrimp finally got it. <laughs> hey, Johnny Dolly, you're okay. Anybody else want to get smart? <laughs> He caught me off of the guard. You're an expert, huh, Flippy? Well, you ain't any more. Now, Lefty, I'll take my gun. Oh, oh sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're okay, Johnny. Dunn. All right, now let's get things straight. I'm not the cops, but I'll drag him in if necessary. Oh, no, listen. You listen. I'm going to try to stop what's going on around here, and if any one of you interferes, I'll have you locked up so fast you won't know what's happened to you. No, no wait a minute. Now, listen to me, will you, Dollar? Well, look. I guess we're all kind of shaky. You know, we're... <clears throat> well, we, we're sort of uh, somewhat upset by the events of the past couple of weeks or two. You, you know what I mean? Lefty, Joe told me that if the burglaries, robberies, whatever they are, go on much longer, there's liable to be a war between you and the people of the town. Well, you ain't worried, now. We got enough guns and ammo stashed away around the Shut up, bull. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, Lefty, sure. I'm sure you have. But if you ever expect to make peace again with the townspeople, if you expect to stay on here... We got at least 15 years to go. Shut up. Okay. All right, look. All we got here is our uh, hunting rifles and we're shotguns and a couple of pistols. In case of a snake, you know, while we're hunting or fishing here in the swamps. A lot of cotton mouse around here, you know. Yeah, that's a fact, Johnny. The point is, I didn't come here without providing for any and every exigency. Uh, what, 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 what's that mean? Oh, boy, what a dope. <clears throat> it, it means if anything happens to him, we're dead. Now, uh, ain't that... Excuse me. Uh, isn't that right, Dollar? Right. You see? Now, give me a hand, cooperate with me, and maybe we can clear this thing up. Don't... And I have only one alternative. What's that mean? Shut up. And that's to have you legally ousted from here, out of the state if necessary. Oh, now, look, Dollar. We'll cooperate. Now, I don't mind telling you, we love this place. Look, it's the only real home we got. Flippy and Sadie, we got Bull and Mary and me and Nora. Maybe, maybe we got records, all right. Uh, Some of us maybe did time for some of the little jobs we pulled, huh? But we've been playing it straight since we come here all along the line. It's like I told you, Johnny. Yeah, honest. Look, that's the way we want to keep it. If the people in virtual just leave us, keep it that way. And, and you know something? I, I don't get it. Don't get what, Lefty? Well, over 20 years, everything's been nice and okay, huh? Now they got to start this. What about the losses they've suffered? They ask me, Dollar, they're phonies to cover up for robbing our stuff. Nobody asked you. Oh. Maybe they think the same way about your losses. Huh? Say. Yeah. Now, where's the owner of this place, uh, Carraway? Oh, yeah, he's over in Virtue at his office. Office? Sure, he's a mayor and a police. All right. Joe and I are going over to see him. Now, now, Johnny... Oh, Smokey, uh... will you please don't go? They see you guys coming from here, they're going to take a shot at you. That Caraway told me so. Yeah. Sure. We'll take that chance. Come on, Joe. Well, uh, I'll tell you, Johnny. Tell I... me along the way. Come on. The more I thought about the whole thing, the sillier it all seemed. Yet it was obvious that even after 20 years, Lefty and Bull and Flippy might think of only one way to settle their problems, with a gun. And if the people of Virtue were feeling the same way. But as Joe and I walked along the main, the only street of the little town, there were no signs of hostility or even suspicion toward us. Now, now look, Johnny. If those bums back at the plantation are making this trouble... Why? Why would they, Joe? Well, that's what I don't get. But what if they don't like your interfering and decide to knock you off? Then I'll probably go to my grave unmourned, unremembered. Yeah, but you told Lefty you'd provided for every exigent... Well, for if anything should happen to you. Yeah, and he and the boys believed it. And if anything does, the... Huh? Yeah. All I can hope is that they keep on believing. Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Sometimes a quotation is a helpful thing because it points out some wisdom that helps us to lead better lives. Here's one that struck me as being very wise and true. Dr. Samuel Johnson, that wise and witty man immortalized by Boswell, said, quote, It matters not how a man dies, but how he lives, unquote. A man's life may be long or short, but the way he lives it is the important thing. It's important, no matter what he does, that he have integrity. 
loyalty, and honor, and a sound code of conduct. Enlisting at the age of 17 with his parents' permission, Corporal Charles L. Gilliland found himself soon after his 18th birthday in a narrow defile in the middle of the treacherous rocky terrain of Tongman Ni, Korea. At 2.30 a.m. that moonlit morning of April 25th, 1951, Corporal Gilliland's Army Unit, Company I, 7th Infantry Regimental Combat Team of the 3rd Division, became the focal point of a murderous assault from Chinese Communist forces. The fighting became brutal and bloody. The brunt of the attack was directed up the defile guarded by Gilliland with his automatic rifle. The slashing barrage of small arms, automatic weapons, mortar and artillery fire was dropping the men all around him. Gilliland faced the full force of the assault and advancing against tremendous odds, poured a steady fire into the attacking forces and eventually halted them. For valiant and heroic conduct, Corporal Charles Gilliland was awarded the Medal of Honor. Although in age, he still may have been considered a boy, he had lived and died like a man. And now, Act Three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Village of Virtue Matters. Joe Pigatello and I walked the main street of Virtue, South Carolina, unmolested, virtually unnoticed. And we found the mayor, Parley Carraway, in the little shack that served for an office. I'm also the police chief, Mr. Dollar. Don't you forget that, sir. And you found no clue as to who has been committing the robberies? No, sir. None whatsoever. But who else would do it? They're all three of them ex-gangsters. Sure. Ex-gangsters. Why, Mr. Carraway? Why would these men suddenly want to make trouble with their friends, your townspeople? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Unless, of course, they think they can take over the way they used to take over gangs in the old days. After 20 years of a happy relationship? Mr. Carraway, they never made a bit of trouble in all that time. I know it, I know it. But the fact remains that unless this trouble stops, after all, Virtue was here long before they came, unless it stops, I say, I shall have to break their lease and make them leave the plantation. Oh, they pay you pretty well for it, huh? Enough to keep it in good repair. Say, and, uh... that's a beautiful ring you're wearing. Huh? Oh, oh, yes. Yeah, two and a half carat diamonds, sir. Yeah. And is that your nice new car out front? Yeah, it certainly is. Ain't it pretty? About $8,000, pretty. Yeah. Hey, didn't you have a new one last year, too, Mr. Carraway? Of course. I try to have one every year. But now, gentlemen... Tell me one thing, Mr. Carraway. Uh, yes, sir? If you really think the robberies around here are going to cause so much trouble... Oh, I do. I do. That's why I contacted uh, Mr. Picatello. Well, why haven't you called in the state police? Because I am the mayor of Virtue. I'm the police department. And I can take care of these things myself. And now that you gentlemen have witnessed the bad blood between these gangsters and the people of the town, well, sir, I'm going to throw them off that plantation. In spite of all the money they've been paying you? Yes, sir, and I'm sure you gentlemen will back me up in... Uh, all the money, did you say? Enough to keep you well-dressed, well-fed, and fancy cars. And now look here, sir. Do you realize how much that property will bring? Well, that depends. How much have you been offered? I'll tell you how much. 124000 ah. How did you know? You just told me. Well, now listen. You also you... told me why you've been robbing the people of virtue and those men at the plantation to stir up bad feeling, uh, give you an excuse to get them out. What? Johnny, you're right. Uh, uh, now, just... just Tear away really if just... I do call in the state police. It'll be to have you locked up. No. And if Joe here has any sense, he'll tell the insurance company to bring charges of fraud against you. You said it. Oh, but the money. Think of all the money I could make selling the old place. Now, where's the stuff that's been stolen? It hasn't been harmed. It's stored away, carefully stored away. I was going to give it back when, when those men left, and, and I could sell the place. Give them their stuff, too? Oh, I'd make up for it in cash, every cent of it in cash, yes. I'd, I'd say it was for breaking the lease. Truly, Mr. Dollar. Now, you listen, you old money-grubbing crook. You're in trouble. You... you call in the state police? You bet I will. Unless... Unless what, sir? First, you lay off the plantation. You've leased it to those men. Let them have it. And return all the stuff you stole. Oh, but if they find out... Well, you figured how to get it away from them. Now figure out how to get it back. Discover it, anything you like. Well, the point is that if you don't get it back, I'll tell them where it is. Oh. And you know what that'll mean. Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Dollar. I'll, I'll get it back. Also respect that lease. I believe it has 15 more years to run. Yes, sir, it has. I will. Okay. I... Do all this and Joe and I will forget the whole thing. But if you don't, 
And Joe will be checking on you. You said it. Oh, but I will, I will, Mr. Dollar. I promise you I'll okay. get right on the... Come on, Joe. Let's go back to the plantation and have a drink with some respectable citizens. <laughs> Yeah, this insurance business really has some funny ones. And I guess it's the funny ones that balance out the bad, the tragic cases. Anyhow, I like it. Expense account total, including the trip back to Hartford. Oh, uh, call it a hundred bucks even. And in view of our little, uh, secret, Joe, well, maybe you'd better pay it out of petty cash. And listen, those pals of yours, you better drop in on them now and then to make sure they do stay on the straight and narrow, as well as that old coot caraway. Yours truly... Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment. Our flag now numbers 50 stars. And behind each star, there stands yet another flag representing one of the 50 states. Michigan's state flag was born on February 22nd, 1837. Because of the strategic role played by Michigan in the War of 1812, the word, to a bore, I will defend, is prominent on the blue flag of Michigan. Beneath it, a rising sun casts its rays over a lake, and a man standing on a peninsula with his right hand raised, symbolizing peace, while in his left hand he holds a gun, indicating that although they love peace, the people of Michigan are ready to defend their state and nation. Another motto, the state's official one, is at the base of the flag. Seek queris peninsulum emonem circumspis. If you seek a pleasant peninsula, look about you. Thus does Michigan's flag carry its own invitation to visit one of America's scenic areas. Michigan state flag, the flag of the 26th state to enter the Union, was adopted on August 1st, 1911. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a strange series of fires. And believe me, the reason for them is a strange one, too. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote today's story. Heard in our cast were Frank Nelson, Billy Hallop, Jack Crucian, Peter Leeds, Gil Stratton, and Will Wright. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverly speaking. United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.